Hi there, my name is Conrad and in this video we're going to take a detailed look at the over operation. We're also going to have a little bit of a history lesson about how they used to perform over operations back in the day of film and optical compositing and really early days of cinema. In my previous video we looked at pre-multiplication. I explained what a pre-multiplied image is and how we go about making one. And in this video we're going to see why pre-multiplication is important when we want to perform an over operation. The two things kind of go together. You need a pre-multiplied image for an over operation to work correctly. So if you don't understand pre-multiplication um, and you haven't seen my previous video, I suggest you go and watch my previous video before you watch this one. Performing an over operation is one of the most fundamental things we can do in compositing. Taking one layer and placing it in front of another is the most simple thing we want to do. And we do it all the time. We do it so often that we just take it for granted. Um, so it's good sometimes to step back and, and actually look at what's going on when we perform this operation. Um, I think having an understanding of how an operation works allows us to troubleshoot things when they don't work quite how we expect um, and allow us to understand what's happening in the software. It gives us a bit of a sense of the bigger picture. Um, and learning a little bit of history about how it used to be done, I think also gives us some insight into um, things that have happened before us and gives us a way of thinking about things a little bit differently and helps us appreciate the tools that we have today. So let's get started with a little bit of history. Back in the days of film, it was possible to expose several different images onto the same frame. You could film something, then rewind the film that you just used and expose something different onto the same frame before you developed it. And because light is additive, you would end up with this double exposed look that had a sense of ghostly transparency. We can achieve the same effect in Nuke using a plus operation. When we do this, we are literally just adding pixel values from two images together. Uh, let's use these two images as an example. We have a constant, and this constant is gray. Every pixel is 0 0.05 in all three channels. And we have this checkerboard. Checkerboard's also gray, so the channels are all equal. But we have bright squares where the pixel values are 0.5, we have medium squares where the pixel values are 0.25 and we have these black squares where the pixel values are zero. So let's see what happens when we add this to the constant. When we look at the merge node, we can see that where the bright squares were added to the background, we had 0.5 from the constant and we had 0.5 from the bright squares. We get a new value of one, 0.5 plus 0.5 is one. If we look at where the medium squares in the checkerboard were, they were 0.25 and we've added those to the background of the constant that was 0.5, so we get a new value of 0.75. And if we look at the dark squares, the dark squares are zero, pixel values of zero. So when we add zero to 0.5 of the, of the constant, we get 0.5, we just get the constant. So you can see here that the operation is pretty straightforward, literally just plussing the two images together. Okay, so let's see how this works with more photographic elements. I've got two pictures here. I've got a picture of a bear and I've got a picture of a bird. You can see that the bird has been repositioned. So we've actually got black around the edge of the image, um, but there's no matte applied. So the bird's still on the back on its original background. Now let's merge these with a plus plus merge node. And we put the two together and you can see that we get that double exposed photographic uh, look, that sort of semi-transparent, um, ghostly overlay look. But you can see that where the bird has black in the frame, where there's nothing over here, um, it doesn't affect the bare image at all because those are values of zero and we're plusing zero to the background. So nothing changes in the areas that were already black. We only get a change over here where there were values in the red, green and blue val uh, values in the red, green and blue for the bird. Now let's zoom in and take a closer look and see what's happening. I've got a pixel selected here. If we look at the background, we can see that in the red channel, we have a value of 0.372. And in the foreground, we have a value of 0.20. So when we plus those together and we look at the result, we can see that plus 302, sorry, plus 37 and plus 20 we get a value of 0.58, which is exactly what those two values added together would give us. So you can see here that this plus operation works pretty straightforwardly. We're just adding the two channels together 
and we get this overlaid look, but we get no effect where there is black in one of the layers. So let's go back to our film camera setup. If we were to film a scene which was deliberately dark in a certain area, then rewind the film and expose a second image that only had details where the first scene was dark, we would have a controlled double exposure that looked like a composite of one image on top of the other. This was how some of the first visual effects were created, like George Melier's The Man with the Rubber Head. You can see where the head of one plate lines up with the dark doorway of the second plate. But filmmakers could also use mats to block the light from certain areas of the frame. When working in camera, they would create these mats with pieces of card, or by painting black paint on a piece of glass in front of the camera. These mats would be static and couldn't change throughout the shot. There is an article on f-stoppers with some great gifts from old movies that illustrate this technique really well, and I'll include a link to that below. Creating these effects in camera was risky because if you made a mistake with the second take, you also ruin the first take. So filmmakers started using optical printers to create these effects as a post-production process. Optical printers allowed the operator to take multiple pieces of developed film and combine them onto a new strip of film to create a new image. This was a safer way to work because you only use copies of the footage rather than the original master. Optical printers also allowed the creation of moving mats, either through color separation or keying techniques, and rotoscoping. But these mats still work the same way. The foreground would be masked by the mat, then the mat would be inverted and applied to the background. Then the two layers could be exposed together as a double exposure. FX Guide has a great article and video from a few years ago that goes into much more detail about how these optical printers worked. And the BBC Horizons documentary from the 80s about ILM and how they used their optical printers to create the visual effects for Indiana Jones and Star Wars is a great watch. I've included links to both below. I think having an understanding of how things used to be done is really useful to help us appreciate what we have now. Okay, so we've discussed how we would composite one layer in front of another layer using an optical printer or in camera using a mat and a double exposed uh, technique. So let's try and recreate this in Nuke using these two images that we were using before. We have our bear as our background, and we have our bird as our foreground. Now this time round, I have pre-multiplied the bird. I've taken a mat that we created with um, some keying and some roto, and I've pre-multiplied the bird uh, in the way we explained in the previous video. Um, now in Nuke, we have a merge operation, a merge node that you can get by hitting the M key, and it defaults to over. Now if I view that, this is the result we're hoping to get. We want just the bird on top of the bear, and this is what we're aiming for. But let's uh, break this down and look at the steps that the operation, the over operation is doing uh, to get this process. Now, we already have our mat for our foreground image, and we talked about how in camera or in the optical printer, um, when we double expose two images, there was basically a plus uh, operation and we showed that before. So we can change our operation in our merge node to plus and we get this. You can see that where the bird had already been masked off, the background doesn't change, which is what we we're expecting. Now, we mentioned that when we filmed, when we created this effect in camera, we were uh, making masks in front of the lens, we had to invert the mask and apply it to the second layer to hold out one layer from the other. So we can use the alpha channel that we have with the bird and we can invert it and apply it to the bear. So the first thing we want to do is we want to take this alpha channel that we have with the bird and we want to shuffle it into all four channels so that we can apply it to the red, the green and the blue channel of the bear. So I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to hit enter and I'm going to get a shuffle node on a new branch here. Now this is that new shuffle node in Nuke 12. So if you hold down Alt, you can drag the alpha channel from the input layer and it will connect to all four layers in the output layer. And if we look here now, we can see that if we hit A toggle, we've got the mat in all four layers of this image. Now we said we wanted to invert this. Now in Nuke, there is a node called invert and it does exactly what we want. So if we connect this invert node to the shuffle node and we look at what we get here, 
it inverts the mat. So everything that was black is now white and anything that is white was now black. So we've got the complete opposite of our map. Now, before we go on, let's just quickly see what's happening here. If we hover over our tooltip here, we can see invert replace the selected channel with one minus the channel. Now, this is another bit of simple maths that we can think about and follow in our heads. So what Nuke is doing here is it is taking our input. Our mask here is, our mat is one. So one minus one becomes zero. Over here, our original mat is zero. So one minus zero, we get one. Now, if we look in these areas in the middle here, in the fringe here, if we look at this original value, we've got a value of 0.77. So one minus 0.77 is 0.221. So you can see that what was uh, nearly three quarters opaque is now just under one quarter opaque. So if we look somewhere else here, we've got uh, a new a value coming in of 0 0.04. One minus 0 0.04 is going to be something like 0.96 and we get 0.959. Let's try and find a 50%. Here we go. Something the input is 0 0.5. So one minus 0 0.5, we get almost 0 0.5, 0 0.49. So you can see that if something's half opaque when it goes in, it's half opaque when it comes out. If something is three quarters opaque when it comes in, it's one quarter opaque when it comes out. If something is a quarter opaque, when it comes in, it's three quarters of paper when it comes out. So now let's take this map. We've got our inverted map. And to create the pre-multiplied image in the first place, if you remember, we use the multiply merges and we multiplied this map with the image. So let's multiply the map with the image. So now you can see that we have the background with the, the map stenciling out the shape of the bird. So we have the background with the foreground held out. We have the foreground, with the background masked out. And if we just plus the two together, we get our comp. And if we compare that with the over node that we had before, we will see that they are identical. So this is what's happening with the over operation. We are taking the mat that comes with our pre-multiplied image. This is why the pre-multiplication is, is important. We need to have the alpha channel and the alpha channel needs to have been applied to our foreground image for this to work. We are taking that mat, we're shuffling it into all four channels so that it affects the red, green, and blue, and we're inverting it. And the invert was straightforward as well, just one minus the image that's coming in. And then we're taking this inverted mat and we're multiplying it with our background image to stencil out the foreground shape um, in the same way that in the optical printer we would invert the mask so that we can combine the two layers of film. Then we plus the two together and you can see that where the background has values of zero, the foreground has values of, uh, sorry, where the background has no values at all, we're plusing the foreground into an empty space so we don't get that double exposed look anymore and we get our perfect over comp. So as you can see, the over operation isn't that complicated at all. We can do all the maths ourselves in our heads. It's just a bit of multiplication and a little bit of addition. I think it's important to realize that a lot of what Nuke does is not that complicated. It just does lots of it very fast. Um, but we can understand what it's doing and we can follow along. And if we do that, it helps us solve problems and it helps us approach our comps in, the first, in a different way in the first place. I hope you found this video useful. Uh, if you have any questions, please ask them in the comments below. If you like the video, please hit like and hit subscribe so that you uh, find out when I publish my next tip. Thanks for watching.